Hey guys, welcome to the show this week. And man, do we have a good one. We have two really good hunts. We're gonna kick things off with Justin Camps in Illinois. Justin's a longtime team member here at Midwest Whitetail and he kills an absolute monster of an eight point. And following that, we're gonna join Aiden and Avery Epperson. They're a couple of our newer team members and they have an epic, epic hunt over a decoy. It just goes to show that when these bucks are in the mood, there's almost nothing that's gonna mess them up. Hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're heading into our stand this morning. We drop down into a, a big ravine and then we just follow this creek bed up. And that way we can get almost to our stand. We gotta climb a big ridge and we're perched right on the edge of a, a really good bedding area. So it's good access coming through the bottom here. And then we just climb straight up to our stand. So killed my buck a year ago yesterday. Here, let's try to get a repeat. It's maybe 10 o'clock and uh, we've seen two bucks so far. One came cruising through and then saw that an eight point up in the in the way, 100 or so yards, so I grounded at him. And uh, <laughs> he came right downwind of us and I was trying to figure out where that grunt came from. And so just a super pretty, I think he's just a two year old, but man, what an awesome deer. His shape looks uh, really similar to birthday buck, so he could be his son, but cool encounter. Uh, most of the cameras that we've been seeing the last few days have been midday movement, uh, like 11 to 2 range, so hopefully things pick up here in the bedding area. You know, one of our neighbors shot uh, our target box we called T-Rex yesterday at 1.30, so our plan is to sit here all day and uh, hopefully the big boys start cruising soon. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's Buster Douglas right there. Give me some dude. He is a giant eight point. Wow. It has been really slow. We've been sitting here all day. It's well after five. We rattled in a few little bucks today and one decent four and we just had a little little buck chase a doe past us. And a few minutes later, David says, I, th I hear something walking, grab your bow. So I do, and here's Buster Douglas. He comes into 20 yards and I just put a good shot on him. 
Yes, November 4, love it. Wow, what a deer. I have shaken like a leaf. <laughs> we wanted it with this wind, that's what we said. Been waiting all week, well, a couple weeks for south wind in this middle of this bedding area. This area is just so good. There's a, a little finger that runs out along this ridge. And once you go into the bottom of the finger, it kind of connects to four different ridges here. And uh, yeah, dad set this stand when we, the first year we had this farm and it's been money ever since. So back to back years, tagged out, November 3, now November 4. <laughs> Dude. Boom. <laughs> well, here we are, sweet November, November 4th, behind a buck we call Buster Douglas. Just an absolute monster eight point. So excited, elated to, to lay my hands on him. We, we've been after him for a few years. Last year was a really, really pretty eight point. We decided to let him go one more year, um, and I found his sheds this winter, and he was a beautiful deer, and man, he grew even more, more than I ever expected and ever thought an eight point could be. But we, we had encounters with Buster uh, Tuesday night. My brother almost shot him. Mitchell saw him, Titus saw him all this week. And then we saw him Tuesday night late, but it was he was just a little too far and it was a little too dark. So today we went back into the, the bedding area. We've been waiting all week for a south wind to go into a, a special stand that dad hung many years back in a buck or in a stand that I shot the shed buck on shed buck on last year November 3. You have to walk up on the bottom of a creek bottom and then you pop up a steep ridge into the stand and it's always it's been a tremendous stand for us we've taken some good deer but this one's truly special Buster Douglas. Welcome to Meadows Whitetail. It's the evening of November 8th. And uh, Avery and I came to the home farm. Our corn that we put in back in the spring, we've got one of the neighbors taking it out. Uh, we had some combine issues and whatnot. But uh, Avery came in here yesterday and checked uh, a camera that we got just across the caddy corner across the creek here from us on a scrape. There's a ton of scrapes in here. There was quite a bit of daylight acti activity uh, the last couple days. I think it was on the 6th, the 5th and 6th, and uh, one of those deer was our number one target uh, for this farm, um, Drifter. We talked a little bit about him in the summer time, um, and that's kind of the deer we put a bunch of food pots in for. The farmer had actually told us about the Big 8, seeing the Big 8, um, told us he's seen a deer in here on a doe bedded in this corn, and it cut from this side. You looking for him? Yeah, but that's his doe, he saying before we got interrupted there the farmer told us that uh, he's seen a buck with a doe um, come from uh, this where we're actually at right now and go over and head in that uh, standing corn that they're shelling in right now and uh, the, way he did, the way he described the buck definitely sounds just like drifter um, which makes a lot of sense because we just had a picture of him here just a couple days ago I seen that doe cross right from where he said that they went in at, and uh, we believe that to be his doe. Um, it, it could be just a, a, another doe, but uh, we're hoping it's his, and maybe he'll come out of here. So. But we set this decoy out uh, for Drifter, just because with him being a mature deer, and uh, 
not exactly knowing where he might come in at. Um, we figured it might give us a better chance to get him to come into bow range you know, because he could easily avoid us by 150 yards. But if he sees that, it might give us a shot. We're going to sit in here and hopefully uh, we'll lay eyes on him tonight. If not, maybe in the morning. He's stumbling. He's going down right there. He's done. Dude, I can see the I can see a crease in him. Like right behind the shoulder, about that far up from him. <coughs> you want me to try and put another one in him? You can, yeah. Oh, get down, get down. shots to get him down. <laughs> I cannot believe this just happened. If you had told me that this was going to happen tonight, I'd have told you you were crazy. But one deer that we thought we would never, ever have an encounter with. When the farmer told us he was in here, what deer? I said it was. I knew exactly it was who, what deer it was, it was drifting. And look up the combines cutting across the field that will unload into the uh, semi. And I look up and he's coming right, right by him, right down the pipe, looking for that hot dough. He was searching these rows back and forth, back and forth. I'm ecstatic. This deer's a brute. That first shot, I couldn't have put it any better in the pump house. That just, that just goes to show how a season can turn around like that. We went from having a terrible season joint to scratching and clawing 
for a mature buck. And it just happens right there, decoity man. And it just happens. Bristled like that. up, just absolutely. Just, it's ridiculous. It's coated. Well, the stars line perfectly tonight. Uh, I'm sitting behind a buck we called Drifter. Uh, we believe him to be a six and a half year old deer. And for me to be able to even have this opportunity uh, is crazy. We had our first picture of this deer three years ago, right here in this uh, cornfield, almost exactly where we were able to take the shot at him. And from there, uh, everything just kind of escalated quickly. Um, we had a, a bunch of pictures of him all the time, but it was just always after season, and we didn't know how we were gonna be able to get an opportunity at this deer. And finally, uh, last year in February, we had a real cold snap, and we had some turnips back behind the house, and uh, he showed up, and it was like clockwork. And we knew then that that was our window of opportunity to be able to get an opportunity at this deer. We uh, remodeled the farm, basically, and put a ton of food plots in, only for this deer just to have an opportunity at him. And we knew that if we had the food and it got cold enough, we would probably have an opportunity in late season. But with a sweet November being as sweet as it is, it gave me an opportunity uh, sooner than I expected. I have to thank the farmer for uh, giving us the heads up that he was in here while he was shelling the corn. And so me and Avery came in here and uh, did a hanging hunt and really had zero hopes of seeing him. Um, but it was worth a shot. We really had no other needs. With that being said, man, we're just thankful to be a part of Meadows Whitetail um, and for this to be our first full hunt on the show. Um, we're ecstatic to be a part of it. And with that being said, uh, thanks for tuning in to Meadows Whitetail. The deer I am most interested in seeing and the one I'm set up on tonight is this big buck that we introduced. Big lopsided deer. He looks like he's just gonna be a giant. And he's just putting on inches. He's a deer that needs a name, so I'll take any suggestions from you guys and hopefully we come up with something good and hopefully he'll stick around this fall. And if it's this 10 with the split brows, I think he will and we'll be able to chase him all fall. He'll be my primary target if he does hang out. Tell them all what you did. <laughs> oh man. Chop this down. <laughs>